Hello wonderful person, welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today I'm taking a look at another educational game that will teach you awesome things. This time it's a game called Democracy 3. This is a game that will teach you all about politics and a little bit about civics, economics and math as well. Let's start a new game and I'm going to show you what it's all about. We're going to actually just start from scratch and uh, here in the beginning you get to select any of these six different democracies in the world or more if you actually um, download mo uh, mods for this game which there's actually over 200 now there's 200 different countries you can add to this game but i'm going to choose my home country of canada it says canada became a self governing dominion in 1867 so there's also a bit of history that you get to learn from this game and according to this um, the game the most population in canada is about 750 000, and we consumed something like uh, 0.26 kilogram of maple syrup per person. It's actually kind of true. I believe this is actually true. If you click on other countries, there's a bit of these funny tidbits for every, every country. So in Australia, they consume 22 million jars of Vegemite. In America, there's a huge obesity rate and also a lot of beef consumption. In Germany, they like to drink beer and sausages and eat sausages. And in France, there's a lot of croissant consumption and cannabis use. Apparently, they like to sm smoke a lot of marijuana Whereas in the United Kingdom, uh, there is a lot of tea and uh, there's a... Oh, this is interesting. Big Mac Index. This is actually a pretty cool concept that you can use to um, estimate how expensive a country is. Uh, Big Mac Index is something we'll talk about in one of the future videos. Anyway, let's start the game. Uh, and in the beginning here, you do have some choices, but I'm just going to jump into the game right away and scare you with all the icons you're about to see. Congratulations on your election victory. So you start the game and uh, you get a bit of information here. So there's the, the, your GDP, your health, education, poverty levels, crime and unemployment. These are sort of your general um, pursuits. This is what you should be focusing on. And your goal is to essentially to try to stay in power and to not get unelected or basically voted out. Now, this might seem very intimidating. This is essentially all of the important icons all in one screen. And it may seem scary at first, but you know what? This is actually a very effective way of presenting information because let's well, just look at this. So there, it says we have an asthma epidemic. It right away tells me what causes it and what uh, what kind of effects this have uh, on my, um, my country, on our country. And in this case, car usage apparently causes um, asthma epidemic. And so does the environment, obviously. And at the same time, this affects parents. So the parents are affected by this. And if I click on this right now, it shows me everything about the parents. So of course, a very high proportion of your citizens are parents and generally they are the people who vote as a group. This kind of tells me what affects um, their satisfaction level. And specifically, this tells me what I need to do to basically help them vote for me in the next elections. And this is essentially the goal in this game. You're trying to be in power and you're trying to create a, a better country. Now, in this case, asthma is a very big concern for them. So if I essentially get rid of um, asthma epidemic, they will become more supportive of me and they will very likely vote for me in the next elections. Now, the cool thing is that each of these icons has essentially these really cool explanations. It shows you the causes and effects. You can basically go into things like... So let's just click on something like this, for example. This is a tobacco tax, and it affects everyone. It um, affects a power, uh, for some reason, it causes poverty, or uh, sorry, decreases poverty, but it also um, decreases tobacco usage and equality. So if I click on this, I can actually do several things here. So first of all... Um, the popularity of voters is very important. So in this case, it's 0%. It's not uh, particularly popular. But I can actually um, increase the uh, tobacco tax to essentially, let's just say, uh, 75%. And this obviously decreases tobacco usage, uh, decreases a little bit of popularity, but also for some reason affects poverty and obviously increases my income dramatically. So I can actually enact this right now if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do this right now. I'm, I'm going to show you something else first. Um, so this is just the start of the game. Uh, the important factors are here on top. This is essentially your power. And this, this is how you change different laws. The more of this you have, the more likely you'll be able to change these laws. This here shows you uh, the either deficit or revenue in your country. So basically, th it's this minus this. 
And lastly, this is debt. And this is super important because the more debt you have, the less money you will have eventually. And at some point, your country can even go bankrupt. So this is kind of the basic icons, but there's more on top here. And we have things like security briefings, for example, which shows you the biggest threats to your country and to your government. In this case, we have something called Wildlife Trust, which I guess um, has a lot of members, but is not particularly threatening. But we also have something called the Land Army that does seem to have a lot of threat, but not a lot of membership. Um, if you want to focus on um, security, you'll have to implement things like uh, cameras, uh, police force. You can even have a spy agency that will basically prevent any kind of terrorist attacks or even assassinations. And I think the biggest thing that can happen to you in this game is that if you actually really piss off someone, if you mix one of these uh, part, um, one of these groups of people which you can see under focus groups if you make them really upset they'll actually assassinate you at some point i remember playing and i started electing things like um i removed the uh, abortion laws or basically made abortion legal i also um legalized uh drugs i legalized uh, underage drinking and all of this caused me to be assassinated by the conservative party and specifically i think actually it was nuns uh, one of the focus groups here is religious and uh, so the nuns actually assassinated me for in electing a lot of really liberal laws that they didn't like, which is pretty funny, I thought. So there's a lot of these other um, various groups here that you can take a look at just to see what they approve or what they don't approve, just so you know how to increase your popularity during the elections. There's also this button right here that shows you different policies and how popular or unpopular they are. So, for example, um, popularity of 32% if you legalize prostitution. Um, or alcohol tax, not very popular. Uh, creationism versus evolution. Um, and things like state schools, which are very popular. And uh, you can also click on this here. This is changes. So here you can actually just click on a di directly on one of the policies and decide to change them uh, from this from this tab right here and lastly there's a compass that shows you what kind of a government you have so in this case we have a slightly socialist government but you can essentially change this to anything you want you can even create a communist country you can create a dictatorship and so on and so forth then the next button right here, this is actually very important. This shows you your income and, and um, your money. And in this in this case, in our country, we have a very, very high state health service. And basically, this is Canadian um, Medicare. And it, this costs us a lot of money. So if I really, really wanted to, and this will probably make people angry, I could essentially, and this is what I'm probably going to do soon, just decrease the, uh, the free Medicare. And you know what? Oh, we don't have a political power, but next turn we will have that. And I'm going to just skip a turn here just so I can actually show you how this works. So now if I go into state uh, health services, I can actually completely erase. Um, yes, confirm changes. Uh, state health services will now cost us very, very little, but we'll still have state pensions, state schools and state housing. So uh, there's a little bit of military spending and so on. And this is essentially where the money goes and this is where it's coming from. So most of our money is coming from really high Canadian income tax and you can actually increase that as well if you wanted to. You can re This will really make people angry, but you know what? We don't care. We don't have enough um, political power right now, but next turn we will. And um, so this is where you change your uh, monet monetary uh, situation. Then next part here, this is various policy ideas which you can implement. Like for example, I can um, increase import tariffs, which will, I believe, increase the income from various goods that are coming into our country. I can also implement different types of welfare and disabilities and um, food stamps and so on. This is apparently very popular. So I may want to implement that right now and so there's a lot of different policy ideas you can try to implement including things like um, different types of tax like junk food tax which will obviously reduce obesity but will make people angry um, health food subsidies um, enterprise investment schemes this will obviously increase your technological advancement and make your country a little bit more wealthy but may also increase poverty uh, plastic bag tax which will obviously decrease pollution rate but may also make someone else angry for some other reasons. So there's a lot of really, really cool um, ideas and a lot of different implementations you can uh, enable in this game, which makes it ridiculously complex. And lastly, we have cabinet. And this is essentially your ministers, which kind of give you little bonuses here and there. But other than that, they're 
unfortunately or disappointingly kind of useless. Um, this is probably the biggest weakness in this game, actually, that the ministers don't seem to do much other than giving you bonuses. Um, but I think with modifications, you can actually change that by making them a little bit more, more active. Lastly, we have another icon right here, which shows you your political party and the uh, your opposition party, which here is known as Jehovah's Party for some reason. I guess that's the na random name I've decided to give them. And we have the achievements here that you unlock throughout the game as you play through it. Now, so that's the game in a nutshell. Let's actually skip a turn and let's see what happens. Ooh, appoint UN ambassador. That's a random event that sometimes you get these random events that will affect your country in some way. And so I can choose who to appoint. I'm not sure if I should have read this, but you know what? Doesn't matter. Let's skip the turn. And so every time you skip a turn, this is essentially um, quarter of the year. And um, you get these quarterly reports that show you what happens in your country. So we've uh, decreased poverty, I think. Yeah, poverty has decreased a little bit, but um, nothing else really changed. We still have a lot of crime. Uh, there's an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. Whaling. Economic forecast. Good news. We are now actually getting some money and so on and so forth. So we've now decreased our deficit a little bit, but it's still quite high. So we may want to actually get out of this debt so that we start getting a little bit more money. Now, one of the whaling situations here, resume whaling or keep ban in place. Um... Let's resume it and see what happens. And um, what you may want to focus on when you play this game is these red icons. Like for example, this right here. This is a vigilante mobs. Uh, we have a problem with that. And it's causing a little bit of situation in our country. So we need to try to solve it by maybe increasing the police force. So giving police more money will possibly change that next turn. And so that's essentially the game in a nutshell. And to be honest, this is probably one of the most complex political simulations I've ever played. And it's absolutely awesome. It's definitely really fun. Uh, you know, assigning yourself a goal where you can decide to become some sort of um, specific type of a insane dictator or a totally liberal po political leader. Like, for example, right now in Canada, we have Justin Trudeau, and uh, who is very liberal. And you may want to try to copy his uh, policies and just try to, you know, legalize everything and support everyone and uh, give people a lot of freedom and so on and so forth, and then see what happens if you do that. Um, but this game is very, very complex, but at the same time, there are some things that are very, very simple. Like, for example, this is, like I said, is a bit of a disappointment. It's a little bit too simple. Also, once you figure out how to win the game, and this is usually done by going into um, the focus groups or just uh, voter types and just seeing what people want and what kind of support you, um, you need to get from them. Like, for example, if I look under policies here, I see that um, science funding is not very popular. So... I may want to increase it to the point where it becomes a lot more popular with everyone and gives us more technology and also state employees become a lot happier. So if I enact that now, it will hopefully become more popular next turn, or actually I think it takes four turns for it to become more popular, but this will obviously also increase our education and uh, possibly decrease uh, a little bit of an unemployment as well. And so now that we have science funding, it has now become 100% popular. So you can basically kind of change a lot of these and uh, make your people love you that way. So in that sense, the game is actually kind of easy, especially if you just want to kind of win. But I think it's a lot more fun to play this as a kind of an experiment, especially if you want to learn more about economics and how the taxation works, how the government, specifically Republican government works and how complex it is. And this is a great tool to learn anything, everything about civics, everything about politics. There's a lot of different concepts uh, a teacher could use to basically teach someone about uh, the connection that form in our society. And it's a perfect way to kind of essentially use uh, these various ideas in a classroom and to essentially let your students tinker with these infographics, uh, you know, different types of graphs and come away a lot smarter from using these. And although initially there is quite a lot of challenge, especially as you learn in this game, uh, with time you'll realize that it's, it's actually relatively simple and you do need to use modifications that are um, obviously free in this game. You just download them and you install them to try to make this a little bit more challenging for yourself. But honestly, like for me personally, I think I'm, my first step is going to be playing through Canada and trying to first make it uh, a peaceful paradise and then try to become a dictator and essentially have everyone love me forever and ever and turn this into military dictatorship. And so to do that, I would obviously go into um, expenditure here and possibly give myself a very, very large military spending. So overwhelming forces. 
uh, even if, if, if it might not be very popular with everyone, then I would also give uh, increased CCTV cameras, armed police, and possibly even prisons. Um, so all of these things would basically lead me toward a military dictatorship uh, and away from a liberal de democracy. So honestly, I would have to definitely recommend this game as an amazing teaching tool. And I think if you're um, anything from a history teacher to a civics or a politics or economics teacher, you should definitely give this a try and uh, let your students play through this. Because I think this is actually one of the best ways to learn the various concepts, like for example, GDP. What is GDP? Well, this game explains it really, really well by showing you an example of how GDP works when it comes to income versus expenditure, for example, and uh, what uh, national debt that means how it affects countries um, you know so here under expenditure because of my debt I have to pay th that interest every quarter and it's currently 6.5 billion which is essentially the sixth most expensive item on um, on my list and so if I decrease that I will not have to pay as much debt anymore and here that to GDP ratio is actually very large and but not obviously not as large as it is for USA but nevertheless, so these are very important topics that you can definitely um, teach your students using this game, and it's absolutely awesome. It's kind of fun. Now, when it comes to uh, um, everything else in this game, um, I think it's it's definitely fun to, to play around, but you don't expect to play this for a very long time uh, unless you start using modifications, which do add a lot of replayability. Uh, but uh, one thing I have to say is that um, currently this game is actually about $25, so it might be a little bit expensive unless you find it on sale. And I, I did find this on sale and it was only 5 bucks for me. And there is actually an expansion that's out now that's, um, that's called Democracy 3 Africa. And I'm going to take a look at this in one of the future videos because it actually adds a lot of African countries and make it even a little bit more fun because you do have a lot of new problems to deal with and a lot of really cool things you can do in that game as well. Now, as for my Canada, I'm going to actually advance a few turns and let's see what happens if we just uh, run through this. There's actually a security briefing here. And we now have a choice of either banning or allowing same-sex marriages. We're obviously going to allow it because this is Canada. And we're going to run through these a few, few more turns and let's see what happens. We might either get assassinated or we might actually win the next elections and continue as the prime minister that seems to do absolutely nothing which is historically one of the prime ministers that Canada used to have, who did absolutely nothing. Animal testing, uh, no change. So we are going to do absolutely nothing and see what occurs in a few years. And just like that, by doing nothing, I've achieved a crime-free utopia. And I think that's because I've increased my military spending dramatically. And we have a capitalist plot. Our intelligence networks has identified a potentially serious plot by a number of wealthy industrialists to force to overthrow the government. Interesting. So I don't exactly know why the capitalists would want us um, out of this, but that's kind of interesting. And the next turn, I get assassinated. You have been the victim of carefully planned assassination. A highly skilled gunman put a bullet right through your skull using a high-tech sniper rifle when you appeared at an event to open a new school, of all things. This was done by the Battenberg Group, thought to be controlled by a number of hyper-wealthy capitalists. Quit the game. So, I've lost my game because I did absolutely nothing and I helped no one, and I got assassinated. Now, so that's obviously not as accurate. I don't think... There has ever been a, a prime minister in Canada that has been assassinated. So in that sense, the democracy may not be super realistic, but it does make the game a little bit more challenging because you do need to start uh, doing things and you can't just run the game by doing absolutely nothing. And this right here is very important. This is the mods that you download for free and you can then change your game and add a lot of new countries. There's over, like I said, there's like over a hundred countries that I've actually seen that you can add to this game. And you can also obviously change the game, making it a little bit more challenging. All in all, this is a pretty awesome title. Give this a try. And I'm posting the link for this game in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. And don't forget to support this game as well by purchasing it if you haven't tried it yet. I'll see you in the next video. Give you later. Bye-bye.